to set the stage for this first week of public impeachment hearings and talk about the 2020 presidential race. I'm here with Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report. She's also the host of Public Radio's Politics with Amy Walter and Tamara Keith from NPR. She also co-hosts the NPR Politics Podcast. And before I turn to both of you, and welcome, by the way, Politics Monday, a little bit of late breaking news. We, and we were just talking about it with Yamish and Lisa, and that is the, the uh, inquiry or the filing by the acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, who was wanting to join the lawsuit by former White House Special uh, National Security Advisor John Bolton and his deputy, uh, Charles Kupperman, uh, who were questioning the, their being subpoenaed to be appear before Congress. He's now withdrawn that filing. So we can set that aside for the okay. moment. <laughs> Thank you. But the drama continues and so many other pieces, as both of you know. And Amy, these hearings, public hearings That's starting right. in two days, how is this going to be different from hearings behind closed doors other than well, the, the fact right other than the fact it's, it's public on <laughs> camera <laughs> right mm -hmm. well the theory is that this could maybe change people's opinions about impeachment which i'm very doubtful that's going to happen i mean if you go back and you look at what the public hearings did during the nixon impeachment era they did move public opinion pretty steadily um, when uh, the summer of 1973 started and the impeachment hearings were public they were watched by almost everybody, 70% of Americans said they watched those hearings live at some point. And the President Nixon, his approval ratings dropped significantly over that summer, dropped about 13 points. And interest and support for more investigation into Watergate rose. Let's fast forward to now. People are much more polarized and partisan even than they were back in the 1970s. People are getting their information from so many different sources. There's not just for television stations. Obviously, people are going to go to the news sources or the um, internet or social media that appeals to them. And so I think what we're going to see is one hearing and a lot of different interpretations of that hearing by a lot of different sources. And we're going to see then, I think, Americans still pretty well settled into how they feel about this. The one group that I'm watching for are those independent voters who probably haven't been paying that much attention as partisans have to this process. Maybe they get moved a little bit right now. They are a little less supportive of impeachment than, than supportive of it. Maybe this pushes that. but. It's going to be very hard to do that. But, Tam, and we may see witnesses called by the Republicans. We're waiting to see how that plays out, right? Uh, we are waiting to see how that plays out. They have put in a, a long wish list, and, and the best way to describe it is a wish list that they have sent to the Democrats uh, on, the, on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, the chairman, Adam Schiff, is the one who gets to decide, ultimately. He has the ultimate power to decide who gets called. Now, this list that Republicans sent over includes names like Hunter Biden, uh, and the anonymous whistleblower, who they would like to have publicly testify. Uh, Schiff has already made it clear that he has no interest in either of those potential witnesses. But there are some other names on that list, um, like Ambassador Volcker um, or uh, Tim Morrison, who is a, a National Security Council aide, uh, or was. And um, both of them are people who have provided closed-door depositions. In those depositions, there were some items that Republicans took some solace in. Uh, Morrison, for instance, said that although he was concerned about the president's call with Zelensky, mm. He didn't think that a law had been broken. His concerns were more about U.S. Uh, and Ukrainian relations and other things like that. So, uh, but in their testimony, if you read it, there are also a lot of things that are damaging to the president uh, and that further corroborate this, this um, narrative that Democrats have built up around the call, uh, that Democrats have been able to sort of corroborate around the call. And so... It, it seems possible, at least, that Democrats would be willing to hear from those witnesses because they are not slam dunk great witnesses for the president. That's right. And and um, and you mentioned Hunter Biden and and Joe Biden. We're going to talk about 2020 very quickly, Amy. But is Joe Biden in the clear here? I mean, we don't. Well, the, he, he, certainly he can, Republicans says, do not want to right. let him go in the clear, and they want to still make that case in the House, which, as Tam pointed out, is not likely to happen. Where it could be an issue is if. 
impeachment passes, it goes to the Senate, and it's Republicans in charge in the Senate side, of course, and they can call witnesses there during the trial. Well, right. and one other thing in the in the sort of cross examination and the questioning that Republicans will do of these witnesses in this public hearing, I mean, in the private depositions, they were asking about Hunter and Joe Biden, right. so you can expect them to do that in public as right. well. Well, for whatever reasons, uh, a man named uh, Mike Bloomberg has decided <laughs> that maybe Joe Biden's chances don't look right. as good as he thought a few months ago. He's now seriously exploring getting in. Amy, quickly to you first. It, is this going to change the race um, if he gets in? If he gets in, it, maybe, but uh, on the margins. Look, there's been a con conventional wisdom among, especially among Democrats, inside the Beltway, elites and establishment, that Joe Biden cannot win the nomination and Elizabeth Warren cannot win the race against Donald Trump. And so what is happening today is this establishment, elite, group of people saying we've got to find a way to ensure that if it's not Joe Biden, if he collapses, because there's this assumption among this group that he is going to collapse, that somebody has to be there as sort of the moderate standard bearer. Elizabeth Warren's positions, especially in things like Medicare for All, are way too far to the left for these swing state voters. But is Michael Bloomberg the answer that people are looking for? If you're Amy Klobuchar or Pete Buttigieg or, you know, no, any of those the other, other in the moderate candidates lane. in that lane, you're raising your hand and saying, you know what, I think I can pick up that slack if Joe Biden's not around. And meanwhile, Biden, of course, is saying, I'm not weak. Hey, I'm going to win this thing. Right. right. And and he is, you know, still running for president. Uh, and and uh, though it's interesting, one of my colleagues, Scott Detrow, spoke with one of Biden's allies uh, who, who said, well, you know, if Biden isn't in the race, then Michael Bloomberg would be a great option, um, which was slightly off message. <laughs> so one of More the, than slightly. Yeah, <laughs> slightly off message. So very quickly to Amy Klobuchar, who said, I, we noticed yesterday yes. uh, in an interview, uh, she was asked about Pete Buttigieg, who's done very well in the polls with money, and she said, if the women on the stage, my fellow women senators, Harris, Warren, and, and myself, do I think we'd be standing on the stage if we had the same experience? He had no. Maybe we're held to a different standard. Are they? Um, for sure, women are held to a different standard. At the same time, I think it also shows the degree to which Iowa has become the most important state, overwhelmingly so. If Pete Buttigieg gets hit a foothold by doing really well in Iowa, it puts Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris, those others out of the mix. Double standard. Uh, certainly, um, she is stating a fact of American <laughs> politics. Uh, women in politics tend not even to run for higher office or to run for the Senate until they're much older, um, because this has been the standard. There, there's like a, a desire to have a great amount of experience Next for female debate. candidates. Speaking of these women, we're going to see them and the guys on stage uh, a week from this Wednesday. That's right. right. Tamara Keith, Amy Walter, thank you both. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we want you to please join us in the meantime for special live coverage of the first public impeachment hearings. We start on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And be sure to sign up for our newsletter, which is dedicated to the topic. You can find the link to subscribe at pbs.org newshour politics.